Hey there, Sam. Imagine we're writing a massive program, a program that has a few thousand lines long. Putting all this code inside one file is certainly not the best thing to do because it is very messy and very hard to maintain in the long run. So what should we do then? Well, we could split our code up into multiple files and load them in inside index.html in sequential order. That looks something like this. However, this is a no-go as well because it's very hard to keep track of the variable names on the global scope. We could have the exact same variable declared in app1.js and app3.js. In other words, the global scope would be a mess to maintain if we were to write our program in this way. It's very hard to track what variables have been declared and what functions are available. So that's a no-go as well. Is there a solution for this? The answer is yes. It is called the ES6 modules. And just a quick recap, ES6 is the version of JavaScript that was released in 2015. And it brings in a lot of good features to JavaScript. And modules is just one of the many. The concept of module is where we write our code in small packages. All the variables and functions that we declared inside the module stay inside the module unless we export them. And when we import this module in another file, the variables and functions that we exported will be usable. Let's take a look on how we can use modules in action. So I'm going to create a new file called app.js and this is where we'll put our main logic in. And now back in index.html, we will need to load app.js. Now in order to make modules to work, we have to set the type attribute to module in our script tag. If we don't do that, JavaScript will throw us an error. Now let's go back to app.js and suppose we're building a calculator. We'll need some mathematical functions like add or subtract. Let's build a module for that. We're going to create a new file called math.js and that will be our math module where we store our mathematical functions. For modules, JavaScript actually allows us to use a .mjs extension rather than a normal .js extension. Using the .mjs extension makes it clear that this file is a module. But naming modules with a .js extension is okay as well. I'll use a .js extension for now. So inside our math.js module, let's define our mathematical functions. I'll quickly define two functions, add and subtract. For the add function, it'll take in an arbitrary number of arguments and calculate the sum. And the subtract function will look very similar to the add function. Once we've finished defining the functions, it's time for us to export these two functions. Here are the rules when it comes to exporting modules. Rule number one, we can export multiple things in one file. As you'll see later, we'll be exporting the add function and our subtract function here. Rule number two, there are two types of export. One is called export default, which is also known as a name export. The other one is called name export. Let's explore them in more details. With export default, whatever we export it in this way will become the default import of this module. Here's the syntax. We simply need to type in the export keyword and the default keyword. And whatever we put after the default keyword will become whatever we import. So if I put a string ABC here, it will become the default import of this module. Let's try to import this module in our app.js file. So to import our default export, we need to type the import keyword and give a name to our unnamed export. In this case, I'll just call it math. And after that, we have to specify which module we're importing. So we'll use the from keyword and the path to our module. Now, if we console out math, we should see the string ABC because ABC is the default export of our math module. Let's run this in our browser and we see the string ABC in the console. So far, so good. An important takeaway here is that whatever we export will be whatever we import. And typically, we will put an object in the default export. Let's try to export our subtract function. And we can already see the console log in our app.js is printing out an object that contains one property, which is our subtract function. So back in app.js, if we want to use our subtract function, we just need to call the subtract property from the math object. And it works. All right, next, let's talk about name export. So name export is pretty similar to default export. The difference is we don't put in the default keyword when we're exporting, and when we're importing, we have to be specific on what we're importing from the module. So let's try to export our add function using the name export method. So we're just going to type in the export keyword and followed by the object and put our add function in it. Now back in app.js, to import a name export, again, we're going to use the import keyword. And now we have to specify which item we want to import from the module. The way to do that is to use a pair of curly braces and put in the name that we want to import. We're importing the add function here. So I'm just going to type in add, and after that, similar as before, we'll use a from keyword and the path of our module. And now let's try our add function. And it works. Sometimes we want to overwrite the name of the export. So to override our add import here, we could use the as keyword and supply our own custom name after it. 
And now in the console log, instead of calling the add function, we'll just call our some other name variable. And it works just like before. The reason why we might want to override the default name of our import is that we could have variable named collisions in the same file. So using the as keyword, we could name our import differently and avoid any collision if there's any. There's no restriction on how many exports we can use inside one module. We can have as many as we like. So I could export a variable hey here and another function called hello. And back in app.js, we can import them separately inside the curly braces. However, it's a good practice that we put everything inside an object under one export keyword because it's clearer and we don't need to look for the export keywords all over the place. All right, key takeaway for this lesson. ES6 modules help us to organize our code and improve reusability across our app. We can just write our module once and import it anywhere in our app. There are two types of export, the default export and the name export. When we import a name export, we'll need to specify what item to import, but not with default export. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.